Hey, my name is Greg. Uh, this is the Happy Fun Times uh, introduction to using Happy Fun Times with Unity. Uh, let's get started. So first thing, let's make a new project. Uh, we'll give it a name. Uh, I don't know, how about uh, our Happy Fun Times? And so what you'd want to do um, is you want to go to the Asset Store and download the Happy Fun Times plugin. Um, I don't think it's actually available right now, so uh, you can also download it at the link on the video. I happen to have it on my desktop here, so I'm just going to double click it from my desktop and import it. And I'm just going to import all. And so we're just going to pick a scene and run it and it should work. So the first thing is uh, go into the project, go into the Happy Fun Times folder, find the scenes. Uh, let's just open the 2D platform scene and let's run it. Now, if this is your first time you've run it, it will probably ask you to install Happy Fun Times. So uh, follow the instructions that it gives you, download it, install it, and then stop the scene and run it again once you're finished installing it. If you're on Windows, you will probably need to uh, click some little thing in the corner because uh, it'll say, we don't know who this program is by. Um, so go through that. But once you have it running, the easiest way to test is to run a browser. So I'm going to use Chrome. Uh, you can use Firefox. Safari should work as well. But um, open a browser window. Make it nice and small so you can see both the game view and the browser. And then go to localhost 18679. And you should see a controller pop up. And you can see that I'm controlling Unity through the browser. And so this is actually a good point in that you can use this to debug if you want to write your own controllers. Uh, this first version of Happy Fun Times that you just installed comes with a set of controllers uh, to try to make it easy to get started, but I'd really encourage you guys to come up with some new things because, you know, having a, having a couple buttons um, for an old school game is cool, but um, why not do something even more original? So if this is working, the next thing to do is to take out a phone. I'm going to get out my uh, my iPhone, go over to Safari, and go to happyfuntimes.net. And as long as your phone is on the same network, you should it should connect, and you should get uh, another player connect, connected to your phone. It might ask you for a name, so enter your name. If you've already entered a name, uh, if you're lucky, it will just keep using that. You can get out another phone or an iPad or a tablet or something. I'm gonna, here's an Android phone. Um, I'm gonna run Chrome. Again, I'm gonna go to happyfuntimes.net. And here we are. You'll see it's a little weird. That's because uh, Chrome actually supports going full screen. So once you touch the screen, it will go full screen. And now um, the control is the way I want it to be. So yeah, if you had 10 or 20 players over, you'd have 10 or 20 players in this. Uh, you could open more browser windows if you want to see that feature. Uh, another thing to notice is that if I stop the game, the phones will all say they're switching games. If I run this again, they should all come back. I have to touch the screen again and we're back. You can see iPhone is here. Now, if you look over here in the corner, you'll see that there's the three players. If I pick one, I'm going to pick uh, Jill because it's the one that corresponds to this Android phone. And if I look over here in the inspector, down at the bottom, there's a gamepad with controller options. And I can show you the different controllers. Here's the ones I've written for you. Here's a one-button controller. Here's a two-button controller. Here's a D-pad with one button. A D-pad with two buttons. Uh, just a D-pad. Um, a D-pad with or two D-pads, an L and R pad and one button, which is what I started with, an L and R pad with two buttons, uh, just an L and R pad, and then there's also a touch screen and an orient screen, and I'll, I'll get back to those in a moment, but let's put it back to what it started as. Um, so let me show you another scene. Let's load another scene. Let's stop this. Let's pick the orientation scene, and I'll run this again. The orientation scene shows orienting the phone, so you can see this phone matches that one. And this phone matches that one. And now I have it so that if I shake it, they'll move around in whatever direction the phone is going. And so you can see that happen. If you want to make some game where you can <laughs> swish the characters around the screen. Oh, I 
don't know where he went. <laughs> there he is. All right. So that's an orientation example. There's also a touchscreen example. So I'll run that one. This one uh, uses the controls to show you where the finger is and move something in the direct proportion of that. And so these are all samples that should just work out of the box. Uh, feel free to look at the code, of course, and uh, I will try to make some videos to explain them in a little more detail. And also check out the videos that already exist. Those videos cover samples that uh, where the controllers were part of the sample. This is kind of funky to explain. Up until this example, um, all of the samples that I've made have been one game with one controller custom programmed for that game where everything that happened on the phone, when I say controller, I mean what happens on the phone. Everything that happened on the phone was custom for that game. Uh, just recently, I made this system that you just saw where I had a bunch of pre-made controllers. And uh, that way, so you can get started quick uh, if you have some game out there that you want to just add phone support for, you might be able to use one of those to get started. Uh, I will uh, go over how to do that in another video. So yeah, hopefully you'll see it working and I hope to see what you make.